So I'm recording this intro because I'm waiting for my Amazon stuff to come in so I can start the second part of this. But I'm going to make an app that controls an LED. And I, I did it with Swift. It took like two days, a lot of headaches. And I built the Flutter one in like eight minutes. So yeah, the, the first part of this video is pretty funny. Second part, we'll see. Hopefully I figure it out. If not, then you'll never see this intro. Let's go. Let's freaking go. <laughs> First question we need to answer is what kind of mic controller should I get? So the big thing driving this whole project is that I want it to be controlled by Wi-Fi so that I can control it from anywhere in the world. I can be in the middle of a forest and I can turn on my little LED at home. So here's a list of all Wi-Fi microcontrollers. The ESP32 and the ESP8266 seem, seem to be like the most popular ones. So either one of those should work. But again, I went with the ESP32 because I saw the most things around it online. And I mean, I'm gonna need a lot of help for this. Now while I'm waiting for that beautiful ESP32 to come in, I need to build a Swift app. Again, I've never done Swift before. So the first step of learning some brand new technology, you go to Net Ninja and type in whatever you want to learn. And wow, Net Ninja doesn't have a series. This is the first language I haven't seen him do. I'm sure it's coming, but I'll click on some tutorial like this, set it to 30x speed, and then just grind it out. All right, this ain't it. We're going over variables here. It's taking too much time. I'm just gonna jump right into Xcode and see what happens. So I started the project and I started looking around and yeah, I don't know what any of this means. I don't know what this struct, what this scene, what this window group is. I mean, you can kind of get a feel for it. This content view is like the main screen and that's what this seems to run. But I definitely need to look a little deeper. So I found a Swift language tour. Here I could go through the languages and then I'm sure they have docs on how exactly it works with Swift UI. Well, damn, I found something even better. It's called Introducing Swift UI. It's a Swift UI tutorial. For those of you that are completely new, Swift UI is to Swift, like Flutter is to Dart, like React is to JavaScript. So basically, Swift UI is the framework while Swift is the language. We have all this. It's a tutorial about creating and combining views. And then it takes you step by step with images and everything on what you should be doing. Well, that is awesome. Like, this is definitely the best way to go through and learn. All right, time to grind this out. I'll be right back. Man, I've been having a tough time learning this Swift stuff. I don't think it's Swift. I think Swift seems like an okay language, but just Xcode sucks. I mean, I've been struggling with Swift too, but I feel like that, that one's my fault. I've been struggling to turn this little stupid button on to, based on the database state, but I'll figure that one out. But some things I just hate about Xcode. Like, look at this. So. I'm trying to code, right? Right here. I'm trying to code. Let's say I put in an error. I put D. You wait one, two, three, four, four seconds until this comes in that you did something wrong. And when you're first learning, it's so freaking frustrating. Command X on a line doesn't delete the whole line. I mean, I found a workaround. I changed it to delete line with command shift X, but like that's something I use all the time. If you're trying to figure something out, like what does this async do? I'm all spoiled with Flutter and Dart. I could just hover over this and like see what it does, but you can't do that in Swift. And then it doesn't auto format. So if you add another print statement over here, you save it, it just doesn't do anything. It just stays there. And look at this, how does this make sense? So on initializing, I'm toggling the LED. So I'm calling this function. I call perform async work, which is just calling the database so I could get the value, update value, then print update value, and then change LED on and then print LED. And then look, look at this. What the heck is this? True and false? Come on now. So I'm kind of pissed. I want to do a challenge to see how fast I could make this app in Flutter because it's super simple. You just connect the database and that's it. So speed run, go. Boom, LED status true, it's done. Literally, look, rerun it, it'll save it, it'll load in as on. And you turn it off, it'll update to false. That's how quick it is. I just, let me look at the time. Eight minutes, eight minutes and it's loading and all that. Come on, Swift, it should be that easy. Uh, I'm not giving up though, I'm gonna make Swift work. So you might be wondering how I got so good at Flutter. Well, years and years of building projects and learning it. But now I created a whole resource called Hunger Mind so you could learn it a lot faster than I did. So you can enter the docs and there's a bunch of free resources. There's also a dark mode if you're one of those. And then there's a banger of a course. It's called Login with River Potter and Firebase. It's built with robustness and scale in mind. It comes with a ton of content about how you should think when you're building applications, 
how you should approach building features, how you make sure everything's separated in their own separate concerns, how you can make sure everything's organized so people can come in and help you out with projects. All that's included in the course and more. Feel free to look through the whole table of contents. There's a lot of stuff in here. And eventually there's gonna be an Arduino section here. So I recommend you come, come to this site, check it every so often, and then maybe there'll be some cool new stuff in here. A couple unfortunate news. I found out I wasn't using this mic the whole time. I was using my MacBook mic, so hopefully it sounds all right when I edit it. Secondly, I finally got it after like two whole days. Look, I can click this button. I'll turn it off. I go to Superbase, which is the database I used because apparently Firestore does not support watchOS, which is, I don't know why. I didn't even look into it, but I got it. So you see it's false and I go here, update it. Now it is true, perfect. And I'm not gonna lie to you guys, this was just straight chat GPT. I just, just all chat GPT. I don't really know what I did here, but I did it. All right, there we all deserve a little explanation of the code. So here I have a private variable called toggle state. And this toggle state controls this right here, toggle. So we start out as false. Now here's how you lay out the UI. In Swift, you have things called a V stack and an H stack. So VStack, kind of like it sounds, is a vertical stack of components. So this whole page right here is a vertical stack. I see first the little text that's right here. Then you have an H stack right after it, which is the I'm an iOS dev, that the dot kind of. There's two texts in there. And an H stack is a horizontal stack. Then we have a toggle with a little naughty little message there. Whenever that toggle changes, we have an on change method right here, and we call a task, which is a separate thread. So there's the main thread that handles the UI and the main application, and we set this in a separate task because it's asynchronous, so we can like do calls and like retrievals without affecting the actual UI of our application. This is actually the reason I was having that problem where the variable wasn't updating. It's because it was doing it in a separate task. Now I'm not going to cover that function too much. The update LED function just calls our Superbase server and updates that value to whatever the new value is. The cooler thing is this on up here. So on up here is whenever this whole V stack, so wherever basically our whole screen appears onto the screen, this part will be executed. And this load toggle state async function is defined down here. We retrieve the LED status from Superbase which is defined over here. After we retrieve it, we do this dispatch queue.main.async. So what this does is it takes that main thread that I was talking about and brings information to the main thread. So that's what that main is. And the asynchronous is because it's asynchronous. <laughs> so this piece of code right here updates this toggle state within the main thread, which updates our UI here. I gotta show you what came in. Here's a setup, by the way, pipe. And then we have a second desk over here, right next to the sewing machine, cause yeah, real men sew, but these little guys came in. So this little module right here can connect to Wi-Fi, and we can program it to whatever we want it to do pretty much. I'm just gonna make an LED turn on. So now hopefully this goes a little bit better than the whole Swift thing did. This is what I look like being a dork. Here, can you hold this? So this circuit is the complete circuit. Now it's pretty simple, but I figured I'll still explain it. So we have this coming from output number two right here. That's important to remember. And it goes into this resistor. Now this resistor is a 220 ohm resistor. And it goes into this LED, which then routes back to the ground, which is this whole back row right here. The way LEDs work is that they only work one way. So you have the longer end, you want that to go to the positive, and then the shorter end, you want that to go to the ground. So make sure we put it in that way. Now it's time to grind some Arduino code. Oh boys, let's go. Oh, I finally got it. Let me flip this camera around. You see this little microcontroller. This app calls a database right here. And this LED reads from this database. So here we can go and update the database. Let's change this to true. And in three, two, one, let's go. There it is, let's go. Oh, that is awesome. And now so here we can change it to not show. 
and it gets updated. Check this out. And it's all done through Wi-Fi, so it's not done through Bluetooth. I can go be anywhere in the world and I can control this little LED right here as long as it has power. Now to actually run some Arduino code, I downloaded the Arduino VS Code plugin. You can also use the Arduino IDE that they have, but I think VS Code looks a lot sexier. Now, one step that I haven't figured out is you got to go to this sketchy looking website and look for CH343. And for me, I'm a Mac user, so I installed the Mac one. Now, these are supposed to be the drivers for the ESP32 chip. Now, I don't know why it's from the sketchy looking site. Once I learn a bit, little bit more about drivers and all these chips, I'll definitely have a whole section on HungryMind.com. The whole Arduino section on HungryMind is gonna be to make Arduino easier and easier to understand. So once you have that installed, make sure you set the right serial port. You are module to the ESP32 S3 dev module. I think other ones could work, but this one definitely worked for me. And then you should be able to run it. So this is like what the most simple Arduino application looks like. All Arduino apps have a setup, and then a loop. That's the basics of every Arduino app. So first you set up whatever you need to set up for your Arduino app to run. And then you just have an infinite loop that keeps looping. And you can have it loop like almost instantaneously, constantly, but that doesn't really make sense. That's gonna use a lot of power. I have mine loop every one second. You could do five seconds, you could do one hour, you could do whatever you want. And this will just print that the LED is on and it will turn on the LED. Now, before we upload it, we have to define this LED built in. So this LED built-in is going to be a variable. I'm gonna define the variable LED built-in, which is the one that we want to turn on to be two, because that's, that's the port that we put the little pin into. So there we go, you can see the LED turned on. And we can also go to the serial monitor. So the reason I put this print statement here is that says LED is on, because you can go to the correct port, which is our serial port, and we start monitoring. So see, LED just keeps printing, LED is on every one second. Now we just have to write the rest of the code to connect Superbase to it. So I want to go to the Arduino library manager. And the first thing we're going to search for is Superbase. So you'll see ESP32 Superbase. Now we can install this library and include this library in our project. So here's what the working Arduino app looks like. So you're going to need four things. You're going to need your Superbase URL. When you create a Superbase project, you'll be able to find it in there. Your Anon key as well, so we can connect to it. So then you're going to need your Wi-Fi SSID and then your password. The setup process is actually pretty pretty straightforward. The only two things that are really happening here is we have Wi-Fi begin. So we're trying to establish the Wi-Fi connection. And then we're gonna do DB begin, Superbase URL, and Anon key. So this is the actual connection to Superbase. So that's the whole setup. Now we're gonna be looping every one second. So every second is gonna to go to Superbase, is gonna check for the database value, and it's gonna come back and tell us what we got. So that's exactly what we did. We ran a query to Superbase right here. And then this ESP32 Superbase package says we need to reset our URL query every time. Not sure why, but I just did it. So now I could have just parsed a string, but it's a really simple application for now. And I just read that we get this so that the ID of one, which is the only thing in our in our database is equal to true. If it's true, we turn the LED on. If it's not, we turn it off. So there we go, it's uploading. You see the periods that it prints out often and we get the LED status true, LED is on. And here you can see the actual board, the LED is on. Now, if I go to app, I can turn it off and turn it back on. Let's go! And now for the ultimate test. Can I turn the light on from the middle of nowhere? Here I forgot that when you screen record it doesn't take your voice, but I'm like, oh, look at me, I'm in the middle of a forest. Let's see if I can turn it on with this button. And then I click the button and it, it worked. A great success!